are loaded and leaving the go, driveway. Turkey? The old turkey gobbler says goodbye to us as we head out. We're going up through the Cascades and we're going to look up some hot springs on our way through. Through the tree covered Cascades along the Mackenzie River and then the Willamette River a covered bridge stands there as it has for years. Our first stop will be a hot springs on Wall Creek. We hike up a tree line trail for a ways in some old growth fir and cedar till we come to the warm springs right on the edge of Wall Creek. How warm is it? Huh? Lukewarm? This hot springs isn't very warm but it's good for a hot day like it is today and the cold creek is running right next to it so you can get warmed up and jump in the creek. We have just a small warm pool here along the shores of Wall Creek and the volcanic gases are escaping and, and uh, zigzagging their way to the surface here and bringing hot water with them too. But the pool isn't a real hot one, it's like body temperature. And a spectacular setting of forest setting with all the ferns and old growth trees. That reach skyward. And there's a big log here between the pool and wall street. Uh, Wall Street comes tumbling down pretty fast on its way down toward the Willamette River. Someone had left a hammock here tied between two trees and so I decided that it's only appropriate that I try this hammock out. You can't beat this. I got warmed up in the hot springs and relaxed and then I lay in the shade of some old growth trees here gently rocking in the hammock. With Wall Creek roaring in the background and a gentle breeze gently rocking the tops of the trees above me. The hammock left its very distinct design all over my back, but that's all right. That'll go away in just a few minutes. Another quick dip in the hot springs, and the sun is getting low in the sky, and so it's going to be time for us to move on real soon because we're heading east to eastern Oregon. Sure. A nice little delicacy waits us along the trail edge here. The thimble berries are always good when you can find them along the trail's edge and they're ripe and prime old this time. The year. little shrub here growing in the dense shade is what I owe my very life. That's a Pacific yew tree that uh, tax hall for chemotherapies made from the bark of this tree. The showy Penstemon stands along the trail's edge to add beauty and charm to the trail through the dense forest. Even the most dainty of wild flowers along trail's edge don't go unnoticed against their background of sword fern. 
we're losing daylight in a hurry so we find a little logging road and we pull off roll our sleeping bags out on the ground and spend the night under the stars out not too far before we get to Fort Rock. Seems like the night's all too short and morning is here before we know it and it's time to get up roll the sleeping bags up and head out. By the time we're ready to go the sun is peeking between the lodge poles which are standing tall all around us here. There had been some dry lightning so there were numerous forest fires around. We see this one just before we get into Lakeview. There's still plenty of smoke billowing skyward here but I understood this fire was pretty much under control by now and the helicopters and the aerial bombers had moved on to other priorities. We go into Lakeview and gas up and head east. The next thing we see is Hart Mountain standing in the background here as we move down a fairly decent paved road toward Hart Mountain Antelope Refuge. We see the lakes at the foot of Hart Mountain after we go past Plush which is right ahead of us. Plush certainly isn't the booming little town that it once was. I think most of the businesses have closed here. I'm not sure whether the store even sells gasoline anymore here. So we move past Plush and we're heading toward Hart Mountain once again. Some ravens and vultures are taking the chance dining on a smashed rabbit in the middle of the highway. The ravens fly but the vulture he's pretty full and he'd just soon not fly right now if he could help it. He decides that he has to fly a little bit so he'll just land on a fence post and sit there till we go on by then he'll finish filling his belly. He's a quite handsome young fella with a bald head and rough feathers. Before we ever get into Hart Mountain National Antelope Refuge we find the very animal that this place is named after and owes its existence to. It's our American antelope or pronghorn grazing along the edge of one of the lakes at the foot of Hart Mountain Antelope Refuge. Our paved road turns to gravel as we climb Hart Mountain. We can look out every foot we go ahead. We can look out and see more and more lakes. This place is just a series of lakes at the foot of Hart Mountain and these lakes do have fish in them. There are a lot of crappie in there and good big ones too. Wouldn't you know it, as soon as we get up on top, here's a greeting committee out there to watch us go by. Several really, really nice buck antelope. The antelope numbers were really low here just a few years ago, but they've rebounded with a vengeance here, and there are more antelope here than you can imagine. Every place you look, you'll see a little herd of antelope, and this is a bachelor herd. The guys are all out talking business here. The rutting season is almost upon us here within a little while so it's time to start practicing and gearing up for a good antelope fight up here on the top of Hart Mountain. That's what the top of this mountain was made for. Another buck, 
checks us out as we go by. He's not even going to bother to run. He's just ready to start polishing those horns and getting ready for that all-important rut which will be upon him real soon. I think if I were him, I'd be practicing getting wild by now because this place is open for antelope hunting within about two weeks. So these bucks better know how to run and be wild as can be by then unless they want to end up on someone's wall. These bucks have one thing in mind and only one thing and that's getting ready for, ready for the rut. This buck's horns look to me like they're plenty polished already but a little more certainly won't hurt and besides that bush needs a good working over and it's gonna get it and also those black spots on the side of his cheek are scent glands so if he rubs them there he'll leave his scent there for the does. That bush must be fighting back because he's becoming more and more violent with it all the time and pretty soon if that bush doesn't behave itself he'll rip it clear out of the ground and throw it someplace. All that effort and the little doe behind seems to be paying no attention. Maybe if he goes to another bush and works it over he'll get her attention. But no, nah, she'd just soon walk away. But wow, what a handsome fellow he is. He has a tall and wide spread of horns and they're polished till they shine enough that it hurts your eyes in the sunlight. He should be ready. She's still not paying the attention she should, so maybe by raking up another bush here, maybe she'll look over there then, and he's certainly leaving plenty of scent from those glands on his cheek on the bush. She just can't help but look. But where is she? I don't even see her. Well, maybe it's not worthwhile working that bush over then. Just well wander off and graze a bit. And here she is, just wandering around and not paying one bit of attention. She's not much of a doe. She may be just a little too masculine for him. She has horns. Little horns there, undeveloped horns. And so maybe he better just go find him another doe and she can run off into the sagebrush. Still, maybe she isn't that bad after all. And after all, she is looking back at him. Maybe, oh, uh, just maybe. Uh, it's, it's worth looking into anyway. It just very well might work out. And she's not eating that grass right alongside him because that's the only grass to eat. She must have something in mind. The antelope's going to be just fine without us. We move on toward a little sign that points toward the hot springs. Let's go in and check it out and also we can camp there. And there it is behind that stone structure. This sagebrush is in bloom and the butterflies are flocking around it. Well let's go look at that hot springs. This building has been built around it in recent years. It used to be an old cinder block building there. So they've redone it in rock. And there it is, the hot springs. And how nice. The bubbles come percolating up from the bottom in here again and zigzag their way to the surface as they bring hot water from deep down in the earth. What are we waiting on? It's time to try out the pool and Marge 
beats me in it and she says the temperature's just perfect in it there so we'll go ahead and spend some time there the wall is just a perfect height for her to hang her brand new towel so when she gets out she'll have a towel there to lay on and take in some of that wonderful sunshine out there this pool's even big enough she's going to try to swim in it a little bit there it's really clear today the water is outside the hot springs is some wild mint growing along the creek bank and also wild flowers every place you look along the creek bank and these bees seem to be enjoying this thistle blossom here they're really working it over they have to work hard and extract as much as a sweet nectar as they can because these blossoms will be dried up pretty soon and there will be no more to eat. These swallows that were sitting on the no camping sign, I guess that rule doesn't apply to them. The little creek right in front of the hot springs is where a lot of little trout call home. You can hear them there jumping for insects all the time and you can even fish for them if you want there usually the bigger ones are laying under the bank and you have to use artificial flies or spinners there so probably the big ones are going to get away but it's fun to watch them anyway you can catch grasshoppers and toss them in there and watch the fish come out and fight for them mosses growing under the water in the creek even have a dainty little blossom on them to even add color to the creek the lush grass grows along the creek with the wild flowers mixed in with it the creek is running in the background with the wild flowers adding beauty to it even the moss in the creek has its flowers here. I've caught a giant horse fly and I'm going to throw him in the creek and see how long it takes him to get eaten by a fish. By now it's time for us to pack up and we're going to head out for the Steens Mountains. A raven sets on a rock and a badger runs for it out in front of us as he crosses through the tall grass an antelope stands by and watches a big eagle takes to wing and he's off out across the prairie grasses a cloud of dust boils up behind us as we have 50 miles of dirt road to go across here till we come to the pavement near French Glen. I steer us along as we move mile after mile down this dirt road and I'm watching for wild game all the time. The Steens Mountains show up ahead of us and there's even some snow up there now so that's where we're going to go up on to the highest point of the Steens Mountains. A hawk stands alert and at attention as we go past him. He's probably looking for his next meal perched high upon the top of a bush alongside the road. We stop for a moment in front of Lily Lake. The butterflies are swarming over the wild flowers here alongside the lake. The lake is so covered with lily pads you can hardly see the water as we move further and further up the Steens Mountains. 
we've arrived at Fish Lake and we're going to drive down through the little campground here to the edge of the lake and test the water and see if maybe we can catch a fish. Marge baits her hook with worm. She's a worm fisherman but anyway she digs her own worms. That's as good as a fly fisherman that ties his own flies. She cast her hook out and it wasn't out there long and she has one on. And it's a nice rainbow that she flaps up, flops up on the dock, puts on her stringer and throws out again and another one and another one till pretty soon she has her limit of five. And I'm next. I've got one on too. It seemed like we got one on most every cast we threw out here. It was just excellent fishing. Sure. You lose him? No, nope. here he is. Here. Whoa, whoa. Get yours, Marge. Okay. Grab it. Fishing reels are grinding and we're catching a fish in nearly every cast. Looks like we're going to have a really good fish feed here real soon. There, how many of those did you catch? Five. Of course, you caught this biggest one. Yeah. Look at that. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. well, we better get them on ice and we'll have us a... Fish fry. A really nice fish feed. And what a pretty little lake here in the Steens Mountains to fish in here. It's just crystal clear and... The limit was five apiece. Five each, and we each got five. Uh -huh. Not only was the fishing excellent, but the scenery was too. Here a sticky geranium grow. And now that we have our fish, we're going to go on up higher in the Steens and look the country over. A hawk catches a thermo in his quest for his morning breakfast here. Near the summit of the Steens Mountains, a cow parsnip is gently waving in the breeze. A shaggy daisy is in bloom here. It looks like it lives up to its name. And a sagebrush buttercup is blooming very nicely here. A butterfly is trying to suck a little, suck a little nectar out of a balsa root that is growing here, gently waving in the breeze as well. The lush shrub growing on the cliff's edge has its petals stretched out in full bloom and is providing a little bit of shade and protection for this dainty little bluebell. The canyons up here are U-shaped, just an excellent example of glacier activity here thousands and thousands of years ago. We can hear the water running down below as we walk along the canyon edge. There are even some snow banks. Across the canyon is a Gunsight Pass. Marge pauses a minute to catch her breath in this high altitude overlooking a s snow bank on the edge of the canyon wall. There's a dwarf yarrow growing on top of the mountain. This was used by warriors of old to address battle wounds. The, the Steens Mountain even has the thistle, the Steens Mountain thistle standing in bloom. The asters, yarrow, 
and Balsarut all seem to be getting along together just fine here, blooming in a their own little patch of flower with their own individual colors. The buckwheat family was certainly well represented up here. Many different kinds of buckwheat. This is the oval leafed desert buckwheat blooming right in the sands. The balsa root is certainly one of the popular ones with all the insects here crawling across the blossoms. The yarrow and balsa root provide a good foreground for a little glacier on the side. By now we're on the summit of the Steens Mountain and we're looking over the rough side and the Albert Desert is the spot Marge is pointing at out there. As we pan around here we see the Albert Ranch down below which has been in operation since 1880. The circle out there is an alfalfa field with a circular irrigation and Man Lake is ahead of it. Rugged cliffs here only good for mountain sheep or mountain goats I guess with still quite a few glaciers left this time of year. We've walked over to the south sort of the south end of the summit of the Steens Mountains here. Southeast end and down there is a little lake called Wild Horse Lake and I need to hike down there and see if I can catch a fish. They're in these waters down there those ice cold waters fed by melting glaciers above and it looks like it wouldn't be too hard to hike down there so I've got to do Two different members of the buckwheat family are in blossom right up above Wild Horse Lake. I'm going to hike down there but there won't be time today so I'll have to come back another time and hike in. A tiny dwarf lupin is in bloom up here in this very high altitude and another Steens Mountain thistle. This is the only place in the world where you find these thistles like this and they're quite a beauty of a thistle. There's even a lush green meadow on the edge of Wild Horse uh, Lake. The white Leia even does quite well up here in this high altitude where the snow has just melted off. Big Indian Canyon looks about like all of them up here on the Steens. The Steens Mountains is about the most different place I've ever been. There's just nothing to compare it to and the same with the vegetation up here. Some of these plants and flowers grow nowhere else but up here. There's even the shaggy mane mushroom pushing its way up, waving in the breeze in front of a yarrow plant. Two more shaggy manes have pushed their way up through the gravel here. They're not supposed to be up this time of year, but maybe we could try them and see how they're going to be. We'll have fish and shaggy mane mushroom. That sounds like a really good combination. Their butterflies are working hard on the flowers here. I believe this is the invasive plant, the knapweed, although it's been introduced here from someplace else and it sort of takes over. So it's one that they're, they're fighting to get rid of, but I'm not sure. I couldn't find it in any of my books. At least the butterflies seem to be enjoying it. Every canyon up here seems to have about the same shape and they are deep and there's a little stream running down at the bottom of each of them. This is the upper Blitzen River where it starts out and then runs in to Malheur National Wildlife Refuge down below and there's some quite steep cliffs here, some 
spectacular landscape right off the summit of the Steens Mountains. As we move farther down toward the desert, we see a few cattle. This is the only industry up here, the beef industry, laying here chewing its cud on the edge of a water hole. They'll move up on top later, but right now they're down here because the grass hasn't grown tall enough up there and some of the poison plants are too dangerous till they grow up, till they dry up a little. Clear down in the Catlow Valley floor alongside the road there's some big springs just come gushing right out of the mountain and then there's some caves up above and right in this spot the Native Americans called this place home. This valley at one time was a giant lake bed. Now it's a dry lake bed and made into farmland and it stretches as far as the eye can see. We've arrived at the rain shadow of the Steens Mountains. That would be the far east side and it's a desert here. A jackrabbit would have to pack his lunch to cross here. This is the Albert Desert, but this year it has quite a bit of water on it. It's an old dry lake bed, and it stretches out here for over a hundred square miles. At nearly 5,000 foot elevation, we see something that shouldn't be here. There's an orchard up here with apricots and peaches and, and uh, pears and cherries and apples. This is where an old, some old miners had planted this orchard and there's even some green peaches on and some nearly ripe apricots. We'll have some of them and take some down below for Carl. The winds have toppled one of the big peach trees here but it still has green on it and still peaches. Maybe they'll make it but there are still other trees and they're receding themselves here. A sunflower, the first time we've seen sunflowers on this trip, is waving in the breeze overlooking the Albert Desert. This sort of has its own climate over here, totally different than any place else. And this is why the peaches and apricots and everything grow here. Right near the edge of the Albert Desert is what we've been looking for. It's a hot springs. There's an old shack here, an old tin shack around one of the pools. The other pool has nothing. The water runs down and it's piped into these pools. You can even regulate the temperature. Here comes Marge down. She looks like she's ready for a hot springs after hiking around on the Steens Mountains up above us. The pipes run from the ditch where the hot water is and then you can regulate the amount of hot water you want in the pool. The pools are full and really clean and just about the right temperature today. With the high price of gasoline I think most people haven't showed up over at the desert and so we'll have the hot springs all to ourselves and we can regulate the temperature to just what we want. The sun sets over the summit of the Steens Mountains as we're still enjoying the hot springs but I have one thing in mind and that's to go back up and fish Wild Horse Lake there's old dryer tubs set in the hot springs. They're used as chairs in the hot springs and they're really comfortable and make a nice chair. We look up and here comes Carl, the only resident that lives down on the desert and he's having a lot of problem with his knee so he's walking really slow. He's got to get that knee fixed so he can come down here more easily. And he's 88 years old, but he still lives out here alone without a telephone and loves every minute of it. This is his world, 
and he's going to enjoy it. Carl still gets in the hot tub by himself, refusing all help. He says, sometimes there might not be anybody here, and I've got to do it on my own. He's been to the doctor today over in Boise, which is well over a hundred miles from here. And so he's going to get in and soak his knee. It'll, <coughs> it'll make it feel better. Yeah. A lot of cousins and nieces and all kinds of people back in my way, yeah? Well, I have seen a lot of them for years, you know. And yeah. I thought I'd just like to get a new car or a new pickup and go back and visit them. Yeah. And drop down into Florida and then can come back to uh, Texas and all right. Yeah. 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 Well, I got to thinking, God, when you're over 80, then them cops are really watching you. Get right. At least so long, they'll take your license. You know? Yeah. Well, that's what they make those big airplanes for, Carl. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Anyway, they. Yeah. I got in an accident in town, and it wasn't a damn bit of my fault. I didn't, didn't take my license on it. But the guy that uh, hit me. Had a brand new uh, Chevrolet pickup, big one. He pulled in behind me, and I was parked right behind the uh, Nissan car, nice one. And he had a couple cars in front of him. And that guy got out and went into the store. I just noticed there was an old man walking with a cane and like myself, you know, and I didn't think nothing of it. He came back and started that truck up. And he said, I don't know, I was, thought I was stepping on the brake, but I guess he stepped on the, started it up, and then he stepped on the lamp foot feet, and you know, it was in gear, I got a room right into the back of my truck. Mine went into the knee, uh, little Japanese truck. <laughs> he hit two more, and they made a hell of a mess, sir. Oh, I'll bet it did. My Ooh. truck's still running around with a bent up bumper on it. But... Well, were you in it when it happened? No, I was in the barber shop. Oh. Oh, well, I wasn't in it, but it, it bounced. It went into that the Japanese car, or Honda, and it bounced off of it, and two wheels lined to tear up on the curb. My it God. That hard. Yeah. And, uh, well, poor old guy, he must have. Uh, oh, he banged it up on both ends. And, yeah. And yeah. his uh, new pickup, I noticed the hood was man on it, one, one thunder. Yeah. And I. Kind of peeked in the crack where he, the hood sprung open and the battery in it was knocked loose, you know. Out of the cases head up, the battery in there somewhere was loose and it was like, so I thought that's a hell of a thing. And he was yeah. my sole fellow and he said, Gosh, he says, I'm going to have to. Oh, yeah. He says, I, I'll. An insect is trying to get some nectar from this sunflower down right on the edge of the Albert Desert. A young hawk perches on a bush here. These are the marsh hawk or the northern harrier. They fly low looking for mice across the desert. Get ready to go down to the hot spring. A jackrabbit hops around and nibbles at some tender little weeds right across from where we're camped. An old mama quail hen and her babies are around our campsite there, chasing each other and playing and crowing. I'm going to put our food in the hot springs here to start cooking. Now uh, this uh, hot springs has various different uh, graffiti on it. This one here says Connie likes it hot. We had the umbrella here shading the ice chest. It's kind of like a drunken sheep. We decided to take off on this. A small sliver of the moon is setting above the Steens Mountains by now.
the next morning at first light we need no one to remind us and we don't need television or newspaper to know there are still some forest fires burning around some place. The reflection of the sun shines in the water still left on the Albert Desert. As the sun rises I still have one thing in mind and that's to get up to Wild Horse Lake and hike in there and try to catch one of those fish. Looks like Marge isn't sharing my enthusiasm yet but I'll stir her around in a little bit and we'll head up there. We pull up our camp and head up toward the Steens Mountain Summit. A couple quail are enjoying the sunrise from the vantage point of an old fence post. We have our camp all loaded up and we're heading out now. Take a little detour and go across the dry part of the playa on the Albert Desert. I call it a shortcut. I'm not sure Marge agrees. We stock up on drinking water at Frog Springs. Really some excellent water. We'll set up camp at Fish Lake Campground here and then we'll go down on the lake and fish a while and I'll go to Wild Horse Lake the first thing in the morning. The fishing is like the best you've ever seen. A fish on every cast and soon we'll have our limit. We're going to have to start eating some more fish again. Some quite nice yampa are in bloom right on the edge of Fish Lake. And we go right past them on our way to camp. An old doe is grazing away in the little meadow right behind our campground. We'd see her out there quite a bit. And there it is, my destination, Wild Horse Lake, laying right down below me there. As the sun's gradually creeping up over the hills, the trail winds its way around the top of the cliffs here. I'm on my way down now. I've just got past the cliffs. I've only been on the trail maybe five minutes. Looks like it won't take long at all to get the rest of the way down. It's just a really easy trail right just down a slope here and then there's the lake the flowers of every sort are along the trail's edge here As I walk through a patch of wild flowers along a little seep spring here, I see the sun is creeping out and just almost to the lake. The sun is just touching the lake now. As I'm almost to the lake, I start seeing a fish or two rising, but not nearly as many as there should be. I spotted my first Indian paintbrush here right on the shore of the lake. The camas is in bloom here on Trail's Edge, as well as every other sort of flower you could think of. Right in front of the lake, the trail is very well decorated with wild flowers. This looks to be the death camas, so beware. And I'm getting in the sunshine for the first time since I've been down here. 
Some shooting stars are blooming here, right along this little spring. One of the unique Steens Mountain Thistle is blooming right on the shore of Wild Horse Lake. I'm walking around some of the giant boulders that have toppled down from the cliffs above. As the sunshine is just starting to warm the air, I make a little walk along the shore of the lake. Little horse thief lake is there. And then this canyon, that's the uh, that separates it from the Albert Desert area. <laughs> a beauty of a cutthroat trout I just caught. Really a nice little cut through. I caught another one. Looks like about the same size. Another real pretty cutthroat trout. Shall they get their name cutthroat? Another one on. And another one. I've got another and there are others following it. And there's my daily limit catch of five fish, so I'm going to pack up and head out of here. I'm on my way out now with my five fish limit. The Penstemons have lined the little creeks that are flowing from the glaciers running down into the lake to make it really spectacular. The trail heading out looks pretty easy now. All I have to do is keep one foot ahead of the other. A little ground squirrel stands at attention alongside the trail on the way out. And this is the final leg of the trail. Right up here around that cliff and up on top and I'll the lake slowly disappearing in the background. Probably the roughest, roughest part of the trail is right here just under the summit. Not bad at all. I'm out here on top of the world. I can see Borax Lakes down below me and then 
Wild Horse Canyon and Wild Horse Lake and some of the glaciers. <coughs> and Big Indian Cab Canyon right off to ahead of me here. And here's the wilderness registration thing. Marge has been fishing and shows off her five fish too alongside my five. They're all about the same size. Mine are probably a little bigger though. We have our fish, so we have to take camp down and head back home.